On today's episode, we're sitting down with the Worshipful Masters from Malone Lodge and Zaradatha Lodge to talk about the traveling gavel. You're listening to The First Three Knocks, a Masonic podcast in the District of York, where we discuss topics for the betterment of Masonry. The opinions discussed in this podcast are those of the individual and do not represent the views of Grand Lodge or any other Masonic body. Now, here are your hosts. Well, Brother Scovio, welcome back. We're at Zeradatha Lodge again, We're one of our sir. favorite uh, locations. I know. It, uh, we did one of our last podcasts here, and, and uh, I've been counting down the days on this particular uh, official visit, and uh, I'm super excited to be here once again, and uh, especially for this particular topic, the traveling gavel. What an experience it was this year. A lot of fun. Uh, the district just came together. Um, we had a lot of great commentary to edge the guys on, and we have... Uh, our champions and our our second place uh i would call them champions too because uh, a so, valiant yes. effort a valiant effort by everybody actually yeah. yeah the the race this year in the traveling gavel was phenomenal and we first want to welcome of course a worshipful master bruce etherington from malone lodge who uh, took the traveling gavel this year and also we have worshipful master chris wilson in his own lodge on his on the night of his official visit who has uh, graciously um agreed to give us some of his time uh, on this special night as well. So welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. So I think it's uh, it's very fitting to have you guys sit down with us. Uh, I guess the results are officially in and uh, Malone's the champ. Yeah, we have one last <laughs> official visit tonight and nobody can beat them at this point. So, I mean, you've been declared champions. Tell us what you did. How did you get your guys out? It was uh, an experience of a lifetime being the master this year and having this move along. Um, I've looked at it, it came down to two or three different things. One was at the district level. The, uh, as you mentioned, district secretary, his commentary and prodding people along, a massive, massive influence on how the members of our lodge looked at it. And uh, secondly is the rest of the lodges in the district. I uh, looked at Zaradatha, they were, they were setting an example mm -hmm. and they encouraged us by their example. And uh, it was uh, it was a great experience, and without their efforts, then uh, I don't believe it would have happened. Uh, within our own lodge, I feel it came down came down to past masters, mm. sitting officers, and new members. Wow! And the past masters uh, who were eager and willing to participate and get out there and do it. Uh, we had great buy-in from our officers within our lodge and the new members. And I just, with the new members, the one thing that I did notice was they come into masonry with no preconceived notion of what it is. Right. So we used that to our advantage and to theirs by saying, come on, come out and see this, have some fun. And when they saw what fun we were having... <laughs> it was not hard to get them to come back out. That again. switch, I mean, it was probably already on, but it even turned on even brighter for them, I imagine, just because, again, they get to go out there and see all that fun that we're having and, and uh, just a, a race to the finish, but that togetherness as well. So that's, that's a great point to raise for newer members that uh, immediately you can become engaged and, and mm -hmm. participate in all the wonderful events that we, uh, we put on here within the district or your own lodge. So that's, that's a fantastic point. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And it's the fact it's probably, probably their first experience with traveling. True. Uh, which yeah. is such yeah. a large part what of a rich history. experience. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you think of all the, all the official visits were so full this year. All the number of people. I, to put that in perspective, just looking at some of the, the numbers that I'll share with the listeners, uh, of course, uh, Worshipful Brother Edmund had put out stats, uh, but I was looking at some of the stats today. And uh, so Malone, four wins this year, 108 members attended official visits. That is truly phenomenal. And Zaradatha, this is really interesting, three wins. And I know they got you on the last one. That was really the big one, <laughs> they did. Worshipful Master. But um, you guys had 126 visitors this year. That wow. is phenomenal. Wow. That's impressive. That, that does sound uh, impressive even to me. <laughs> <laughs> so how did, how did you guys pull it off? How did you have so much success? I, I wish there was uh, one single answer I could give you. Um, I think... Um, a couple of years ago, we decided we are going to set a goal of winning a traveling gavel just one time. Mm. We were starting to develop a, a, a reputation within the district of being the lodge that doesn't travel. 
and uh, and we kept saying, well, you know, we're busy and we've got a lot of young members and uh, we came up with every excuse we could we could think of of why we weren't getting out and about. And um, it was really, um, you know, a couple of the brethren uh, just started just going. And one of them, uh, you know, uh, Worshipful Brother Don Kemble, uh, Worshipful Brother Emilio Testa really started leading the charge on getting out to a lot of these official visits. And um, I started following them. And uh, we we decided we first of all we won our traveling gavel the the one night and then we said let's do it again. <laughs> so the following it's year, kind of fun. let's have a little more yeah, fun. Yeah, the following year we said we're going to win another one. So we won another one, and then uh, and and then just this Masonic year we uh, we won our first traveling gavel, and and uh, I thought you know this seemed a lot easier than it has in the past to get guys out, and everybody seems to be having a great time. Let's try to get two. Yeah. So it wasn't really our goal to win the traveling gavel for the year until um, after, I think, the second one. And then we said, guys, we're, we can do this. We've, we've got the mojo. So um, we, we started coming out in force. And I think, uh, I think there was one uh, fateful night at Roland Lodge where... Uh, uh, Worshipful Brother Etherington uh, decided he was going to win that night. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's on. <laughs> and I, 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 maybe, maybe it was another, but there was one night where you were expecting to win and didn't. And then, the, then from then on, <laughs> he was bringing the bus. Oh, yeah. So, uh, and then I think that's when the fun really started uh, to begin. And I was absolutely floored that we could show up at an official visit with 21 brethren and lose and by the way thank you for calling me second champion i i it's much nicer than uh, first loser and the runner uh, up the first time i've heard that i, I like that. best of the rest yeah. best of the rest, there best you of go. The rest. <laughs> uh, it's certainly something to be proud of uh for your lodge and for your lodge of course and you know i think a notable mention is richardson lodge as well came in uh, third place and they they also made a very significant run this year uh Worshipful Brother Wilson, maybe you could just comment on some of the, the outcomes of that momentum that you guys gained in, in your lodge and what you saw. Uh, absolutely. Um, this has been the most fun I've ever had in masonry wow. ever since I joined. Um, and I think a lot of the brethren at Zeradatha feel the same way. And, um, you know, there's... I, uh, Bruce, I thank you very much for that because I think that once our momentum started going, if we if we had pulled ahead and and were winning a traveling gavel with nine or ten guys, um, which used to be more than enough, oh. mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we would have loved it. But it was the it it was the uh, it was you guys. It was Malone Lodge that really sparked uh, something under us. And and um, what I think what we found is is increased uh, sense of fellowship and brotherhood in, in our lodge, and. Some of it comes from uh, some of the things that we've been hearing um, in, in, on the sidelines, okay? So I've heard things like, um, as long as their death, it doesn't win, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've heard. <laughs> hey, didn't I hear about uh, one of the masters wanting to uh, offer a, a pretty uh, sizable donation if anybody could come out and beat Zaradatha? Right, on one so of there was $150 to you. any lodge who can beat Zaradatha. <laughs> Uh, and and uh, I've heard uh, I've heard oh yes we crushed their dreams <laughs> and I thought wow we've gone from the lodge that everybody wanted to see traveling Dude, to the oh, district no. villain the again. villain of the district yeah. <laughs> and uh, and so um, and most of those comments by the way uh, Bruce were coming from your lodge and I just want to say <laughs> that I I've I've thought long and hard about it and i think what it means is you really love us <laughs> well <laughs> I, I think that's part of it as well i truly do I, it's interesting chris because the one thing that you said earlier which was and i it it is the turning point in my mind was us showing up at uh and, and i can't remember which lot of lodge it was but we showed up with 13 thinking ah, we got we'll this. get them tonight slam yeah. dunk and you had 15 that night yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was and Sharon. That's where it was. Sharon. Sharon. It was. <laughs> and at our next meeting, I opened Lodge and said, I'm sick of being a bridesmaid. <laughs> <laughs> and That's great. everyone laughed. And I, credit where credit's due. Um, it would not have been as enjoyable without 
a worthy competitor. And uh, more, and as importantly, within the lodge, without uh, some of the people in our lodge taking the bull by the horns, right. uh, Walter Foster, right mm. worshipful brother Walter here, Foster, here. Yeah, um, the phone the phone calls began. Yeah. Bruce, are you going to that? Yes, Walter, I'll be there. <laughs> and uh, you know it, he he was really one of the strongest ones. But you look at throughout uh, the who our guys showing up were, and it was across all levels of masonry um, from the newest of the new to long-standing uh, past masters and Grand Lodge officers and lots of involvement and uh, it truly was uh, that's what kept it moving and kept the momentum going but I think that uh, always a bridesmaid never a bride kind <laughs> of uh, started uh, it got the blood flowing a, a little, little bit. competitive spirit it, it did it, was it good. did but it was all in it was all for fun and uh, and without worthy competitors, it's, it's not worth it. Uh, you know, I just wanted once in life not to feel like a Toronto Maple Leaf. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to move beyond the 60s, huh? Yeah. Well, I think it was at one of your uh, meetings, uh, and uh, I remember uh, our white worshipful uh, brother Foster getting up and saying, Hey guys, uh, I'll be picking people up. Let's carpool. And I'm pretty sure you had about 18 to 20 fellas in regular attendance, and they all said we're all going. And I thought, oh, my God, here we go again. Yeah. So, again, it's been fantastic from our standpoint, from the sidelines watching. Uh, I think we won the very first one of the year. When it was easy. Uh, when it was easy. <laughs> yeah. and I think it was like seven, and we thought, oh, nice. Uh, we thought he had a cakewalk. And I think we showed up at one of the meetings again uh, a few, uh, probably about midway through, and we had about seven or eight thinking – slam dunk like it used to always be and uh i think it was uh, malone that took it that night with like 18 or 19 fellas oh, so the standards have changed totally yeah. totally but uh, they've brought that harmony back they've brought that uh that again that forging those wonderful relationships that we've already started um it's it's really being able to get out there and see all the same faces and and just create a lot of great good social um intercourse on the side as well which has been really fun and, and nice to to be a part of yeah, just looking at the overall attendance and who was attending it for me it was off it was always thrilling to watch their death come in and the age range of members um, yeah. your yeah. oldest member and uh, uh, we, you... we had a, a night where we had a, a brother in his 20s and a brother who was 95 that yes was, that's and, incredible and that's inspiring and incredible. then it doesn't always come out into the open as to who's there and what's there. The one night yeah. that was the greatest, and actually I had two nights that were great pride for me, was to look out amongst our horde, I like being called the horde from the north. The horde from the north. <laughs> and uh, and, and no, realizing that um, all but two of my sitting officers were there. Wow. And one had emailed me just hours before that he was on a job and couldn't leave yep. and uh, the other one was out of the country and I thought wow that's a that's engagement that's yes mm -hmm. and, that's engagement. Uh, and you start to realize as well that we're not doing this to win a tra traveling gavel yeah. we're doing this because we've become really really good friends yeah which extends so far beyond the lodge doors mm -hmm. and that's well I want to admit that it started I wanted to win that gavel yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> there's got to be a level but, of competition but, and everything, right? It, it, a little bit of 100%. it, hundred percent. I, I I wanted to win the gavel. I'm competitive by nature, but in the end, um, what I found is having lost the gavel, uh, it really and this is going to sound cliche, but it still felt great. I yeah. I really still felt victorious. I felt like we had really won something more than uh, than a hammer in a in a box, and uh, and yeah. And I can't wait till next year, Bruce. We're gonna kick your butt. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll be toning up that butt. Yeah. But you've, you've actually purchased a bus, I understand. Isn't that uh, the investment that you've made? Well, that was the other thing. The the, the comments of the bus, um, <laughs> the number of guys that were well meet at the lodge. And you'd get to the lodge and I'll drive. No, 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 it's okay. I'll drive. No, I'll drive. We had more than <laughs> enough seats. Uh, uh, we never, we were never shy of having room. So yeah, we we didn't get the bus, but we we felt like we did. You're due for one. Uh, we recently had Right Worshipful Brother Scott Rickman on. We had him on a couple of times on the show, and one of the topics we were discussing was the traveling gavel and getting his perspective on what he sees because he's at all of the official visits, as as you would know. And his comment was, you know who really benefits from it, aside from the brethren, is the candidate that night. Think about the impact oh, that yeah, that yeah, has yeah. 
on that person who's coming into masonry or moving up in the levels like uh, brother Sprott is going to be doing this this evening don't remind me <laughs> you're you're up soon <laughs> Um, but his, his comment was, what an impression this has on people coming into the craft. Absolutely. Again, yeah. 50, 60 guys showing up, you know, uh, 15, 20 from the actual hosting lodge and then all the visitors. And it's just tremendous as I said, to see that, uh, to see everybody come to, to support the candidate, the official visit, the, the Grand Lodge officers, and, and as well as everybody else. And, and having that traveling gavel just kind of puts that little icing on the cake to give you a little bit of competitive edge but uh like like you you said earlier uh, even if it wasn't there it still would have been something that i think everybody would have strived to, to work together and and work hard to be a part of the same thing and ultimately this craft is just uh opening those wonderful doors for us all and and giving us uh different uh, experiences and with that let's uh take a few minutes to clear the secretary's desk well, we are finally in the month of June, and as the weather starts to get warmer and we prepare for our summer recess, we have a series of events that uh, you won't want to miss. First off, we have Corinthian Lodge, who will be hosting their spring trivia night and silent auction. This will be held at the Newmarket Temple. All Masons, or sorry, uh, everyone is welcome, not just Masons. The cost will be $10 per person. A potluck dinner will be available. Drinks will be $5 each and coffee and water will be provided for free. If you'd like to attend, please reach out to Brother Junior Warden, Charles Backhouse, or Brother Senior Deacon, Horace Nemus, sorry if I'm uh, butchering those names there, uh, who will be glad to take your RSVPs. Corinthian events are always a blast, so I hear. Um, so if you're free, we highly recommend this one. Second on the list, on Wednesday, June 5th, up at Malone Lodge, we understand the ice has thawed and the snow has melted for our brothers in the deep north. So circle your calendars as this installation will be a special one. We have a father-son combo, brother Mark Schnoflack taking the east and his son, brother Ryan Schnoflack, going into the west. They will also have the traveling gavel to show off that they stole from Zaradatha. Uh, banquet will be early and details will be provided via Facebook and the app. Friday, June 7th, pack the car and head up to Bolton where True Blue will be hosting an installation. Details on the banquet will be provided again on Facebook and on the app once available. Lastly, emails have been sent out to all lodges regarding King Solomon's 108th annual golf tournament. The tournament this year will be held on Wednesday, June 19th, held at Harbor View Golf and Country Club located, located in Guilford. The cost will be $160 per golfer, which comes with a round of golf, a cart, a swag bag, at registration, and a wonderful sit-down meal to follow. You can sign up on your own or as a pair or foursome, and if you don't golf, you're more than welcome just to join for the dinner at a uh, small cost. This event is open to all men and women, not just for Masons. To register, please reach out to Right Worshipful Brother Eric Holt, who will be happy to take your RSVP and sponsor packages are also still available. Keep that in mind. All events mentioned today can also be found on the district Facebook page, as well as always the app. Well, I think that's it for the secretary's desk today. I will pass it back to Gino and Bert. Yeah, I think, uh, and with that, uh, brethren, we'll, we'll uh, say thank you for coming to sit down with us and talk about your experiences with your lodge. Congratulations to you, worshipful sir, and Malone Lodge, and the brethren who've put so much effort, and also to you, worshipful uh, brother Wilson. Very impressive thank work you. that you guys did this year. It is inspiring for all of us. And uh, we certainly had a lot of fun. So we very much look forward to seeing what happens next year. Yeah, it's nice to hear you're already into... getting ready for next yeah. year. So <laughs> it just means round two is about to start and a whole new season. And again, looking forward to it. We'll try to give you guys a run for your money, as I'm sure other lodges will too. But uh, oh, the more the merrier. Bring the it more on. the merrier, exactly. <laughs> that's a great outcome if that's the outcome. Absolutely. 100%. Awesome. Join us next time on The First Three Knocks when we'll be sitting down with Neil Grammer to discuss impactful communication. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The First Three Knocks. Happy to meet, sorry to part, happy to meet again. <laughs>